So thank you, Lindens, and thank you, Ben, for the opening and for getting us in the mood. Uh, modern Hebrew has a snappy response to someone imagining something that you think is ridiculous. So let's say someone says, wow, wouldn't it be great if we won the lottery? And you, the skeptic, say, yeah, well, if my bubby had wheels, dot, 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 im lasafta haitag galgalim, and then you fill in the blank. And it's meant to say, like, you're not going to win the lottery because my bubby never had wheels. But what if we suspended our cynicism for a second? What if we did imagine bubby with wheels? That could be the beginning of an amazing bedtime story for a child or grandchild. Or what if we imagined winning the lottery and saw ourselves donating to tzedakah in ways that would change people's lives? What if we imagined a world of chesed, of love, and of tzedek, of justice, we are so far from that. And what if we use that mental picture to make it a little bit more so? Today is the first day of Elul, and it's a day when we are supposed to imagine ourselves as we could be, to suspend the cynicism a bit. And what if we did that? What if we weren't so quick to dismiss the possibility of real change over this month and over this year? In biblical Hebrew, there's a word for this move, imagining something that did not happen or might not happen. It's lule, which means were it not for, one of the translations. Rabbi Rob Scheinberg says that this word introduces a counterfactual, an alternative that did not come to be. So counterfactual, says Rabbi Scheinberg, can, can, can be upward, imagining a positive thing that could happen, right? I, could imagine if I won the lottery. And if we don't let our cynicism get our best of us, these can spur us to work towards that vision, maybe not buying the lottery ticket, but maybe doing all the good things that we would do with that lottery ticket. Maybe a better example would be, if I exercise more often, then dot, dot, dot. But counterfactuals can also be downward. You can imagine a horrible thing that didn't come to pass. And those counterfactuals encourage gratitude, a sense of, whew, that was a close call. Now that I'm on the other side, how do I act? In the Psalm for Rosh Chodesh Elul that we started saying today, there's a line of that second variety, the counterfactual facing downward. It asks us to imagine a tragedy that might have happened but didn't, and it uses that word lule. As Rabbi Scheinberg writes, at the conclusion of the psalm that mentions various life difficulties and challenges, we read the words, Had I not trusted that I would see God's goodness in the land of the living? And then the writer, re writer just trails off. Imagine the three dots there, even though they're not really three dots. In the Bible, the, ne the writer never tells you exactly what would have happened if the writer had not trusted to see God's goodness. That downward counterfactual is just too difficult even to articulate. Well, what might have happened? So in Farshim, the rabbis fill in the blanks. Rashi said, had I not trusted in God's goodness, I would have been destroyed. Radak says, had I not trusted in God good, God's goodness, I would have been consumed by everything the naysayers say about me. I would have believed all of the ways that people project their own stuff onto me. I would have despaired because I would have seen myself as I've seen, as I, my enemies see me. So Rashi and Radak look back to the opening lines of the Psalm that describes a world where people are cruel, where, where evil armies are arrayed against me, where God is hidden. But what if we translated the verse a bit differently, looking forward instead of back? If only I had trusted God's goodness, dot, dot, dot. The psalmist pauses. The psalmist looks back, sees all those cruel people, the evil armies, and even the pain of feeling like God is hidden. But then the psalmist turns in the other direction, forward. And what word does this poet feel emerging from the soul, it's hope. If only I had trusted in God's goodness, dot, dot, dot. Hope in God, be strong and of good courage and hope in God. Kaveh el Adonai, chazak v'yametz libecha v'kaveh el Adonai. If only I had the ability 
to trust in God's goodness. Wait a second, I still can. Maybe it's not too late. Maybe that's what the Psalm is saying us, saying to us. I don't know what you need this year. Is it hope in God? Is it hope that the science, in the scientists who are looking for a vaccine? Is it hope that people will be able to do what it takes to keep us all safe? Or is it simply the hope for hope, the hope that you can find hope someplace? It's easy to be cynical, to dismiss hope as a Pollyannish response when life feels overwhelming. But the theme of tonight, our kickoff to the program we're planning for this month and through the holidays is hope. Along with thinking about health and love and our sacred community, hope is what's been motivating our show staff and countless volunteers to imagine high holidays that will be very different from anything that any of us know. We hope that you can find, that we can all find in these next months, what you need to go forward. Maybe it'll be a teaching. Maybe it'll be some Torah. Maybe it'll be a melody that you hear on the live stream service or in person. Maybe it's an image from one of the creative videos that we'll be sending out or a memory of just spending a few moments alone in the sanctuary before the holiday. Or maybe it's just getting your moxer from an actual live human being. Today, I sounded the shofar at Shoal and on Knowles Crescent and at Seton Park. A couple days ago, I thought, you know what? We're gonna start sounding the shofar and I, I just miss everybody. And so I put out a little thing in the announcements and over 60 people came out to hear the shofar. 10 were at Minion. Two were outside of the shul after Minion. Another 20 or so were at, uh, were at uh, Knowles Crescent, thanks to the efforts of Suzanne Fruchter, who got out the word. And at Seton Park, just from the email, uh, another 30, 40 people showed up. Some people were on the street. Some people were listening from their balconies. And as I looked at the faces of the people who gathered, after I finished blowing shofar, I saw hope. It was delicate and fleeting, just like the moments right after that last tekiah, but it was hope. I wanna do more of this this month. It was, it was really beautiful and it really filled my soul. Sunday, I'm gonna be at Shul on Arlington Avenue. Uh, we'll stand physically distant. The shofar will don a mask, even though I am test being tested regularly for COVID so that I can blow the shofar. You can invite me to your neighborhood. I'll stand in front of your house or your apartment building. It can just be for you, or you can tell all your friends and family and neighbors to kind of come on outside. And um, if you want me to do that, send an email to the show, and I or another show for blow will come and give you your own pre-holiday concert. The Hebrew word lule backwards is Elul. And the name of the month that leads to the holidays is Elul. So maybe during the month of Elul, we're called to suspend our cynicism and quiet our fears and dust ourselves off and do what we need to do to flip the narrative just long enough to hope. Maybe Bubby did have wheels. And even if we didn't, we can still smile at the idea that incredible things are possible. Shalom, Odeshtov, Shana Tovah.